Let's go down to Rome's. Mercifully, the, the draft is finally, finally getting closer. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday. It's time for another Vikings news dump. He sees you when you're pooping. So, uh, Great screen grab uh, from last year's draft video. So context is they were discussing Jordan Addison and Kevin O'Connell. Addison's a natural route runner and all that stuff. And the Vikings apparently were getting trade offers because they were talking about it. And Kevin O'Connell asked Quasey, does the trade offer blow you away? Paraphrase here. Quasey's like, now, now. They got that face. Mm. I, 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 look, I, I want Quasey to make that face this year when uh, New England's like, oh, well, we're not trading down unless it takes four first-round picks, please. Or uh, me, me, media jabronis saying, like, oh, the Vikings are screwed if they can't trade up. Silencio. Silencio, por favor. No, th things are going to be great. Also fantastic is the annual draft month food shelf fundraiser. So Venmo, Super Chats, Cash Apps this month uh, will be donated to Twin Cities Food Shelves. Uh, we are working with Every Meal uh, this time around. Uh, great organization here in the Twin Cities helping supplement uh, food, uh, food uh, uh, kids with food insecurities. Uh, because m some kids around the state do get uh, most of their nutrition from school uh, and you know weekend, summer can be kind of spotty every meal formerly uh, 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 shared in story uh, helps fills in the gaps so they they do fantastic work uh, so donate directly to them uh, or uh, donate to the show like you typically do a goal is 2200 we're currently sitting at about 550 uh, but of course things are going to spin up once we uh, get on draft night so we're going to have weekly live streams uh, we had this week's wednesday Go check that out as well as at minimum we're, we're doing a day two uh, a draft night stream on that Friday. We'll probably do round one. Screw it. Although, uh, actually, no, screw it. We're we going to do F it. We're, do, we're going to do it live because I, I know that we'll get a ton of super chats there. So uh, they'll put us over the top. So do, do that up. Uh, support uh, every meal and, and support uh, you know, food shelves in the, in the great Twin Cities. There you go. Uh, so first off. So Aaron Henderson, linebacker from back in the day, uh, brother of EJ Henderson. EJ was fantastic as a middle linebacker. Both of them went to Maryland. Aaron was you know, decent uh, for a couple of seasons, more of a you know backup special teams type guy. But I don't know, for, for whatever reason, on Friday, Aaron just woke up and chose violence against the Vikings. So yeah, re respect. Like Aaron's been supporting the team a long time. But I don't know. Uh, so he tweeted this out. Folks don't want to hear this, but as long as the Vikings locker room is filled with nice guys, they ain't going to win. Attitude reflects leadership, and the Vikes are a nice family oriented organization, top to bottom. So basically, Aaron Henderson did not watch Ted Lasso. Mm. Mm -hmm. he, he continued. So, uh, for, all right, so the bottom one, it, it all starts with the head coach. He sets the tone for everything else. Now, uh, he, he did praise Flores which I don't know Fl Flores is really easy to praise. I understand that, but basically he's criticizing uh, Kevin O'Connell's mentality where do nice guys finish last? Who knows? But also like uh, he, he, he wasn't about Zimmer either. The fan base wanted Zimmer gone though. Zim wasn't a dog. He was just a dick. <laughs> it's just funny, man. It, it, it really is funny. Now his assertion that, I don't know. Attitude reflects leadership. Uh, nice family-oriented organization, top to bomb. I mean, okay, uh, that, that's fine. But you, you know what else is a stable, nice organization? The Chiefs. I mean, no one's going to say that Andy Reid is is an a-hole, right? Uh, no one's going to say that Patrick Mahomes is a prima donna jerk. And do that. And also, I, I remember there, there was a couple years there, like in, in the – during the aughts, during like the Love Boat era where – maybe weren't the highest character players uh, in the world in that locker room, and the Vikings didn't win jack squat. So we're trying something else. Uh, th there you go. And like I said, um, I, I feel like th th this comes down to college football too. It it's hard to win a national championship with a locker room full of Boy Scouts, but you can try, right? So, I don't know. Uh, I think that's what the Vikings are doing. They're stressing character. Uh, I respect uh, what ownership ha has enabled Quasey and Kevin O'Connell to do. And we're heading to year three. And, you know, like, like we said, the one the division year one, you can say, oh, those are fluke. Those are Spielman and Zimmer's guys. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, and then year two, they probably would have won the division despite the slow start if Kurt didn't uh, blow out his Achilles. So, here we are. I guess we'll find out in year three. There we go. Mm. Uh, the guy... Uh, setting the table, buying the groceries for year three is General Manager Quasey Dofamensa. This is hilarious. So, Bikes fan page. Uh, Quasey on doing mock drafts. That's right. 
one of us, one of us. Quote, we call them simulations because I'm a nerd. Uh, a lot of clarity comes from these test runs. Hey, if this scenario happens, what would we do? That's how we formulate our defense strategy, our draft strategy. They're valuable exercise. So people make fun of us about being on mock draft 9,572. That's exactly what Quace is doing. Uh, also, I would love it. So say, say that Vikings in-house VEN network just did a video uh, of Quasi in his office, and he's setting his draft board with the PFF and the ESPN draft simulator. People would get so mad. But I, I love it. I, honestly, uh, honestly, do you think Quasi is running mock draft simulations off of software? Probably. He probably, hell, he may, may even just be using PFF and just going through the, because he could have, the team's big board, and then the strategy in various scenarios, right? So you can see, uh, you can go through and be like, all right, so what happens uh, if Daniels uh, goes at two? What happens if May takes a tumble? What happens uh, if there's a trade in the top five that isn't the Vikings? Like, what do we do in this spot? Like, what if Leatu Latu's off the board? What if Dallas Turner falls to 11? Don't know. But he's got to be ready for all scenarios. And you know, people are going to criticize Quasi for this because people criticize Quasi for everything. But I see the value in it, and frankly, he, he should be doing that. Hmm. Also, something he's doing is that there's a lot of roster turnover on the Vikings this season. So CBS Sports, new players acquired during the offseason so far. The commies, you know, with new uh, general manager Evan Peters, new head coach Dan Cam uh, Dan Quinn. Uh, so they're up there at 20. Uh, the Dolphins, uh, so the Dolphins lost a bunch of players, so they had to replace and replenish them. And also, they're, they're in a bit of a cap crunch, so they're at 15. Uh, the Texans. Right, so the Texans lost a fair number of players. They all come, came up here to the Vikings, mm. uh, but they've been busy in the offseason as well. Panthers need an influx of talent. Uh, same thing with the Eagles. The, uh, the Bears obviously in the midst of a rebuild. Uh, the Vikings, right, so the Vikings, third offseason is really turning the corner. And I think that you can confidently say now the rooster is Quasi Dofamensis because a large number of Spielman guys, uh, you know, absent guys like Harrison Smith and, and Derrissaw and Justin Franklin Jefferson, they go. You know, Brian O'Neill, Bradbury in the mix too. So, yeah, uh, Quasey, Kevin O'Connell are firmly putting their stamp on this team, and yeah, uh, I, I'm excited what what's gonna what, what's gonna be happening down the line. Also, something that could be happening down the line is Drake freaking May and our guy Jordan Reed, uh, draft expert over at ESPN. He believes Drake May is the second best quarterback in the NFL draft. Who's one? Sam Hartman. Hmm. Uh, I, I think he. He has a Justin Herbert, Josh Allen type uh, of ceiling, and you know that's been the that, that's been the pretty uh, pretty common comp uh, given uh, given uh, Drake May's size, given his athletic ability, given his arm, given his penchant for gambling as well. Uh, so yeah, Herbert, Josh Allen. Frankly, if Drake May pans out on you know 70, uh, 70 cents on the dollar of that potential, I mean you have a damn good quarterback. And so I've gone back and forth. Right, so uh, of the quarterbacks are, that are, could could and should be available for the Vikings, Daniels' potential is certainly there. McCarthy, I believe, has a very high floor. If everything goes right with Penix and he stays healthy, it's up here. But in terms of the absolute highest ceiling, I, I firmly believe that May is right up there with Caleb Williams. I think that if everything goes right and they land in the best environment and things go well for them, I think that both of them could be elite. Uh, elite type quarterbacks. I, I think that Jane Daniels can be very, very good. Same thing with Penix. I, I think McCarthy can be very, very good, but am I, am I ready to say that he's going to be a, a tier one quarterback that you win because of, as opposed to win with not ready to go that far. And, and again, respect. I, I, I do think that of these four quarterbacks, McCarthy's floor is the highest. I think that Drake may could be in the UFL uh, in, in six years. I think it's possible to. Uh, I think Drake May is high variance. Uh, same thing with Penix, but just due to medicals. Uh, I I think Daniels has a relatively high floor, but I, I do think that McCarthy does have the highest floor because I think that he is Brock Purdy plus in this spot. Uh, but, you know, Jordan come out and, you know, Jordan's a grinder. Jordan's a former college quarterback as well. Uh, and him saying that Drake May is number two, I'm in. I'm in. And, of course, you know, J Josh McCown uh, going way back like chiropractic with Drake May. And he looks he looks damn good in purple. Obviously can't have number 10. So give him number one. There you go. Uh, also, 
Uh, so, you know, Bertie Breer over at Sports Illustrated, he thinks Drake May either lands with the Patriots or the Vikings. Uh, I'd say Williams to Chicago, Daniels to Washington, either May or uh, May to either New England or Minnesota, and then the Cardinals, blah, 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 blah. So basically he's saying, hey, uh, if and when the Vikings uh, do indeed uh, trade up, that that's going to be the crux. And it could be a spot, too. Where the Patriots say the Patriots are all in on Jaden Daniels and they're they're cooler on McCarthy and May and Penix and whoever. All right. So if the commies take Daniels at two, which certainly is possible and plausible, then they could be open for business at three. And it could be a spot to where the Vikings are high on May because of the everything around them, also with McCown in his corner. Uh, and the Patriots they understand that the roster is kind of poopy right now and tossing May out there to the Wolves. Not be a very good idea. Uh, so if Daniels isn't available, uh, them going uh, down and acquiring more assets to help build, bolster that roster, uh, I think it could be a win-win for both uh, the Vikings and, and also for the Patriots and also especially for Drake May because this looks good. This looks really damn good. Uh, something that uh, was supposed to look good but didn't. So Kellamond, uh, who third-round pick back in the day, number 6-6 six, six overall, I had some faith in him coming out of Texas A&M, but it just didn't work out. And, of course, Zimmer just like, uh, I don't need to see Calamon because he's going to practice every day. Hmm. Uh, but Catherine Terrell, beat writer for the Saints. Saints announced they have agreed to terms with quarterback Calamon. Now, Mond has bounced around the league uh, a little bit since the Vikings uh, ultimately let him go. Remember, he was in camp with the Vikings in 2022, uh, the first season with Kevin O'Connell and Quasey. But then they're like, eh, we're, we're going to trade a seventh-round pick for Nick Mullins instead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think that Mon uh, could have a chance to revive his career. I think that he could be an okay uh, backup going forward. And, hell, he's with the Saints. I mean, Derek Carr ain't all that. Can he win it one time? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but uh, that's it. Uh, Vikings news dump on this beautiful Saturday. You guys are the best you know what to do. Skull production value.